So if you're watching this video, you're probably familiar with Meshuggah. And even if you only know one song by Meshuggah, it's probably Bleed. It's one of their most popular songs for good reason. It has everything I love about Meshuggah's style. From crazy patterns phased against backbeats, to a beautiful Holdsworth-inspired guitar solo. But the thing that seems to have caught most people's attention is its physical technicality. It's fast and exhausting to play. That one was mostly stamina. Because <laughs> it was like rehearsing that one, it was like everybody was like, oh, okay, okay, okay. And then it was like, damn. And then it was like everybody had to stop, and Thomas was like, man, I, you know. The infamous opening riff is not too conceptually difficult, but it does take a while to get it into your hands. This part is physically tricky, but it's really just dotted eighth notes against quarter notes. By Meshuggah standards, that's not that complicated. The riff that I'm talking about today, though, is from later in the song, and it combines the technical difficulty of this first riff with much more conceptual difficulty. I'm talking about this part. <laughs> I didn't pay much attention to this part until I started trying to learn bleed on guitar. I made fairly steady progress with all the parts before this, and then when I got here I hit an absolute wall. So what's going on here? Basically, the pattern lasts for 27 16th notes, broken up as 7, 7, 5, 3, 5. It sounds like this. This pattern is phased against regular quarter notes. Because it lasts for an odd number of 16th notes though, it only lines up uh, every four times through the pattern. So each time you repeat the 27 16th notes, it shifts by one 16th note within the beat. Here's what I mean. This 7753 pattern kind of acts like a palindrome when you repeat it, uh, which makes it really easy to lose the thread when things start speeding up. So finally, as is typical for Meshuggah's music, this is phased against a 4-4 backbeat, not just isolated quarter notes, uh, and it goes on for a really long time. So here it is with the recording.
So why do I love this riff so much? I think it's something to do with how complicated it is and how much work it is to get it together compared with how unassuming it is. Remember I said I didn't really pay much attention to this until I tried to get it into my hands. It reminds me of something that Martin Hagstrom said in an interview. Uh, he was talking about a riff in Provis, but it applies equally well here. And then you might wonder, why well, the fuck do you do something that stupid when nobody hears it anyway and now you don't know. <laughs> <laughs> This is something that I love about so much metal. People put all this work into making these elaborate, complicated riffs, not necessarily because anyone will even notice, but just because. On the flip side, what this means is that besides being a blast to listen to, Meshuggah songs and a lot of metal songs are full of these bizarre, complicated things uh, if you take the time to, to really listen. And I, I find that thinking about these things makes me enjoy the songs even more. Anyways, if you agree and if you like this kind of music, uh, go ahead and psych, comment, and subscribe. Um, I'm going to try and get videos like this out every couple weeks. And if anybody has any good recommendations for places to eat around here on YouTube, I'm new. Uh, that would be much appreciated. See ya.